part of Woodhorn's public programme is to bring um, high quality and new arts experiences to our audiences here in South East Northumberland and we're particularly excited to be able to present Laura's work here in one of our historic colliery buildings which is the Walker Fan Drift. When we were approached um, by Invisible Dust and Laura um, we had a look around the colliery site to look for um, appropriate spaces um, to present the work. I think it's fair to say we kind of happened upon the Walker Fan Drift space which isn't normally open to the general public. Immediately upon going in there I think everyone was struck that it was an incredible opportunity to present film work um, and to activate that historic space in an entirely new way um, through art. I was really keen about it being a subterranean space and it was quite a daunting space but it kind of it certainly felt like it was possible to show a moving image work inside there. It sort of began with conversations with Alice Sharp from Invisible Dusk and I talked about this new piece of work that I'd like to make out of my Leverhulme residency with Jeff Orbiton at Durham University. I'm interested in these kind of connections between like something that you that is tangible now that you can feel and see and be and I think with Woodhorn being a, a colliery um, museum uh, and, and from an old working mine and pit there was something there about this kind of 7,000 years of decomposed organic plant material creating this carbon rich uh, landscape and then you go back 300 million years and you've got coal. Durham in the Norman Chapel was a beautiful, raw, slightly damp space, very contemplative, and the sort of feeling of it being within Durham Castle was uh, really important, but this is an entirely contrasting space. It did make me question, you know, what, what my relationship to this landscape is, how as a human being on this planet, you know, there might be some kind of consequences in the sort of activities that I do that might change that landscape or that might have an indirect kind of influence on it. When I started this residency, I kind of knew, you know, that I, it was about peatland erosion was the thing I really wanted to try and get my head into. But Moss Flats was a, a landscape that Jeff had been monitoring for about 20 years. Yes, yeah, for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. So he took me quite early on. I think it was like our second trip. He mm. said, I'm going up to Moss Flats. I think you might like Moss Flats. I was just struck by... Um, how kind of visually sort of dramatic it was, this vast blanket bog, and suddenly there's an opening where you get this real kind of, wow, what is this stuff? And that's how the kind of work began, really. I decided a couple of months in that Moss Flats would be that focus. I was really interested in kind of how the present of it all and what was happening that you could see and how as an artist you could work with that. And obviously Jeff, is, and he'll talk more about it, is interested in the kind of all that data that's there and what's happening at that time. Um, I guess my work has really started to look at the active processes that carry on during storms. So the impact that rainfall has and how much peat actually moves and also when there's big floods, how much peat actually moves through the river systems. There's five billion tonnes of, of carbon stored in UK peatlands. And you know, it's bigger than you know, the forest resource of, of, of Europe. The peats are really important. Of course, if they erode, you lose carbon. And if we can think of methods of stopping erosion, we keep carbon in the landscape and locked away. Over the last 50 years, this landscape's repaired itself and it's revegetated. So Moss Flats, what we talk about today, has been this bare area. It's a tiny little area of bare peat now. It's one of the, one of the few that's left. 